Hello, this is George, KS1U. I'm uh, here showing a an R390A. And I don't normally do this, but I, I'm i actually selling this uh, particular radio. I, uh, I moved into a home without a basement. I just don't have the storage. And uh, it, I've had this for several years. I, I worked on uh, rebuilding it, probably put about 100 hours into it. Had it uh, professionally silk screened, and uh, I'm going to be selling it on either Craigslist or eBay, and I wanted to document that it, it does work. Um, I'm going to try and not have it shipped, uh, but if I do, uh, you know, shipping companies are rough, <laughs> and um, I just want to show everybody that it does work. Um, right now we're on 40 meters. Now the nice thing about these is you have these uh, Collins mechanical filters. And that little sound in the background is my cat who wants me to spend more time with her than the radio. But And uh, this really isn't a radio that uh, just anybody should own because uh, <laughs> there are a lot of controls. It's a, it's a great radio, probably the best tube type uh, receiver ever made, but um, it's sensitive to types of antennas. In fact, I, I normally use uh, an antenna tuner with this. Uh, if you, I have a, a 30 meter a dipole set up now. Uh, if you go down to the uh, the broadcast band, and I I like to uh, do uh, AM DXing, you notice you don't hear much with uh, the uh, the dipole connected. But if you remove the the shield, and, and I'm going to try to. Shut the BFO off. And the court issues a ruling, and the president defers to the ruling. One of the things you have to do is it has so much uh, sensitivity that you occasionally have to turn the RF gain down so it doesn't uh, distort too much. Well, the president judge only deferred to the ruling after speaking about so-called judges. I've replaced uh, just about every uh, capacitor in the uh, in the radio. All of the old uh, uh, paper capacitors uh, replaced with uh, orange drops. Uh, I've uh, solid stated the uh, power supply. Uh, there's some IERC tube shields. I, I ran out of uh, <laughs> tube shields on this particular unit. This is actually about the tenth, um, or this is the tenth one that I've rebuilt over the years since the 70s. And one of the things that I typically do is I put these boxes, uh, Hammond uh, metal boxes, on the rear because. Um, it protects the uh, cables going in and out. Now this is the antenna cable, AC cable, and I put a little box on here with a, uh, an RCA uh, jack so that uh, it makes it more convenient to hook the speaker up. And the speaker has to be 600 ohms, so you either need a, a transformer or, or some way to get the, uh, the impedance match correctly or you're going to have uh, some uh, distorted audio. Uh, of course, I took the thing completely apart, uh, cleaned it uh, right down to the chassis, and uh, with the 
uh, 3TF7 that was in here, uh, since it was intended to uh, be used aboard ship and in uh, situations where uh, the the 120 volts AC or 115 volts AC was not really stable. Uh, they included the 3TF7 uh, uh, ballast to to provide some stability for the BFO and uh, the VFO. Uh, what I did, since I only operated on uh, AC supply here that is very stable, I uh, grounded the the BFO tube uh, ran it in parallel with the uh, VFO tube and then tapped into the 6.3 volt AC line and uh, it, it works fine in this configuration. I did wire the uh, the socket so that you could put a 3TF7 in or a, a solid state uh, converter but you would have to switch it back to series uh, of heaters instead of the uh, uh, the parallel that I have now. Anyhow, it's it's a great radio. I'm sorry I have to get rid of it. <laughs> uh, I had it professionally silk screened. Um, it's the second one in black that I've done, and whoever ends up with it will end up with a nice radio but again this is not a radio for the neophyte or uh, people who aren't familiar with uh, <laughs> tube type equipment with a lot of controls it's not a plug-and-play uh, and uh, that's about it so uh, this is KS1U clear and listening